Ms. Kruger from the select board. Mr. Moderator, I uh, request um, three additional minutes. Without objection, it's granted. Okay. I'm going to talk about Article 22, and I'm also going to um, talk about Article 21 a little bit. And you'll you'll have to forgive me. I've rearranged my talk a little bit um, by this uh, in the moment to. Uh, go with the change in article order. So Article 21 and Article 22 are designed to go together, but each can stand on its own, and they must be voted on separately. So Article 22, we're talking about now, is a zoning article. It's sponsored by the planning board. It's gone through the full public hearing process zoning requires and needs a two-thirds vote to pass, as do all changes to the zoning bylaw. Article 21, which we'll get to a little while, is not zoning. It authorizes the select board to file a home rule petition with the Massachusetts legislature that involves taxes. And it's sponsored by the select board, requiring, and it requires a simple majority vote. So the preservation and creation of affordable housing is an Amherst community value. The town meeting has demonstrated this consistently and vocally over at least two decades. The need for additional housing, uh, additional affordable housing is well documented in Amherst's 2013 housing production plan and the 2015 housing market study, as well as many other sources. In April 2005, Amherst Town Meeting adopted our existing inclusionary zoning bylaw, Article 15, which requires that, a cer that when certain new housing is constructed, it contained some affordable units. It's not resulted in the production of many units of affordable housing, and we can speculate at another time about the reasons for that. About two years ago, the planning board undertook the task of improving the inclusionary bylaw to increase the production of affordable units. The resulting changes to the inclusionary zoning bylaw, Article 15, are contained in what you have before you as warrant Article 22. The amended inclusionary housing section of our zoning bylaw will apply to all residential developments of 10 or more housing units, whether by special permit or by right, excluding subdivisions, which we hope to tackle at a future time. The bylaw will require 10% of the housing produced to be affordable, and it provides a number of cost offsets or developer incentives by allowing additional units to be built on the parcel. Typically, cost offsets allow the building of additional market rate units, sometimes referred to as a density bonus, to offset the cost to the developer providing the required number of affordable units. An inclusionary zoning bylaw provides mandates and incentives for developers to build affordable housing in their developments or to provide a comparable benefit like affordable housing units built on another location, what we're calling off-site units. The goal of inclusionary zoning is to include a broader range of income households in what would otherwise be a market rate development. So the idea is not to ask for so much affordable housing that no housing get bu gets built at all, but to not give more incentives than are, are needed, or you might call giving the store away. There are also technical and le legal reasons for cost offsets but I'm not going to wade into the constitutional takings issue with its many interpretations and legal opinions. Just to say, the best inclusionary zoning bylaws strike a balance between the additional costs the affordability requirements place on a housing developer and the needs of the community for additional affordable housing. One of the complications that Amherst and its planning board faced in crafting a new inclusionary zoning bylaw was that our downtown already pretty much allows for a building or buildings to maximize what the zoning will allow. So additional cost offset units are not really feasible on site. To help solve the problem, the town sought help from a leading affordable housing expert, Judy Barrett of RKG Associates. With her assistance, the planning board has come up with innovative and effective solutions that will work in Amherst, including in the downtown and our other village centers. 
In Ms. Barrett's report, dated um, October 30th, 2014, she tells us that downtown land costs are much higher than land costs found elsewhere in Amherst, and that rental property operating costs tend to run higher in mixed-use developments. To account for this difference, Article 22 creates lower affordability thresholds for downtown and center districts than the other residential zoning districts, targeting households at 95% rather than 80% of the area median income. And then in her conclusion, Ms. Barrett states in her report, a little used but potentially important method in supporting affordable housing development is a real, takes real estate tax exemption for units rented to lower moderate income households. She advised the town to look at non-zoning incentives to go with Article 22. After researching the options available, Amherst has come up with the tax incentive option we are requesting in Article 21. And when we get to Article 21, I have a little bit to add about that article. So with that. Um, could you just give the select board recommendation? Oh, sorry, my last. The select board unanimously supports both Article 21 and Article 22. Thank you. 